Building a PC is all well and good, but if you haven't actually got any games to play, it does defeat the purpose of a gaming PC. But in today's video, we take a look at just that. Buying games and how to start playing them. It's very simple, but it shouldn't be brushed over. Greetings everyone, I'm Proto. In today's episode, I'm gonna be going over all the steps you need to start playing all of your games without even leaving your home. From sites and places to buy them, to installing the DRMs and playing them, as well as you'll be getting some tips and tricks along the way. Trust me, I've been trying to break it down as much as possible, and so without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm gonna start by going over physical media versus digital distribution. Now physical media are obviously the discs that you commonly see when you buy games on console, whereas digital distribution is where you have a game that you purchase online rather than from a retailer such as game. Now to put this debate to an end rather quickly, I pretty much always recommend digital distribution over physical media on the PC specifically for a couple of reasons. Now to my knowledge you generally can't trade these games in again on the PC and as such you're not on a pedestal if you do buy a physical copy like you would be if you bought it on the console where you can just trade it in and such. Now this is done as a form of DRM which prevents people from copying the data on that disc and sharing it with other people. The next is that you're not guaranteed to get an installer. Games like Titanfall 2, the box copy edition, didn't even include a disc but rather an origin key which you can redeem online and then download the game exactly like a key site which does defeat the purpose of buying the box. Buy your games digitally unless you have terrible internet and you also know that you're getting an installer with this game. But we are seeing that less and less since many games go way beyond what a couple of discs can hold. Especially when you look at the file sizes of some of these newer games which are like 50 to 60 gigs. Next when we talk about managing your games, now most of this is done through the use of a DRM. Now DRM stands for Digital Rights Management, whereas DRMs is a Digital Rights Management System. These create a platform that allows you to buy digital versions of PC games through a single marketplace. They do have many other benefits too, such as a huge online community to chat, play games, and share troubleshooting tips with. Personally, besides a few exceptions, all of my games purchased or redeemed have been made through Steam. Getting more to the point, I recommend you download four different DRMs, being Steam, Origin, Uplay, and Battle.net. Having multiple ones will allow you to decide which DRM you want to use for a specific game, meaning that you can get even better deals, and they generally give out free games quite often. As for how you install them, it's very simple. Go to their respective websites, link in the description, and download their Windows client, which I assume you are running Windows as an OS. Double click on the executable file and it should start running. This will allow you to install it. And after that, just make an account either on their website or through this Windows client, and it should sign you in automatically. You should also click on the verification link that you get in your email, but that's a given. Now to give you some perspective into this, you'll probably develop your own preference but to make managing my games simpler, I buy or redeem most of my games through Steam. For EA games like Battlefield and Titanfall, I use Origin, and for Ubisoft games, I generally do that through Uplay, since the keys are normally slightly cheaper than they would otherwise be on Steam. And Steam even has to go through Uplay when you want to play that game. Now, if you want to play Overwatch or other Blizzard games, use Battle.net. And that's really it for managing all of your games locally on your PC. It's pretty simple. Now on the contrary to what you might hear on the internet from console fanboys, finding out whether a game will work on your PC is easier than you think. Basically, unless you're using a super old crappy GPU with integrated graphics like Intel HD graphics, you can run the game. This because rather than the game not working, instead you just have to turn your settings down to get a better experience. You can check in part 1 of the series for more info, but even system requirements are often higher than what you actually need to run the game. For example, Ubisoft decided to give everyone the finger by only allowing Far Cry 4 to work if your CPU has 4 threads or more. Now this meant that anyone using a Pentium at the time was screwed, but not because their hardware wasn't strong enough, but rather because Ubisoft deemed that you just shouldn't be able to run it. Now modders did find a way to bypass this requirement and made public posts that showed how to play Far Cry 4 even if you had a dual core. My point being is that you should stop worrying about what games you can and can't run because chances are you'll be fine running any game. If you're still paranoid about it, go on YouTube, type in your CPU, GPU, and what game you want to play, and then just have a look at some benchmarks or videos of other people playing it, and that should give you an indication that I can actually run it. But most of this will give you an idea of how your system will perform. As John Wood 007 on Reddit perfectly says, modern system requirements are worthless 
and are just arbitrary system specs that are often above and beyond what you need to run the game on a minimal setting level. They're a reference point and in terms of games made in the last two years, often overstated what you actually need. If you're near the system requirements for games, it normally runs fine. As for where you buy your games, you have many, many different options. Whilst you can buy them from places like Steam, Origin, Uplay and Battle.net, due to the nature of all of these different places competing for your money, you can often find them on key sites for even cheaper. As for the key sites that I use, there's GreenManGaming.com, Gamersgate.com, CDKeys.com, followed by BundleStars.com, Indiegala.com, Nuvem, Nuven, uh, God knows how to pronounce that. GOG.com, which I'll get onto more in a minute. And one of my personal favorites being HumbleBundle.com. There's also G2A, but I don't exactly recommend that due to there being better options in terms of price and reliability, minus all the controversy. Just gonna leave this Reddit AMA right here. You know, it's just a simple blow up in your face kind of AMA. Onto the topic of GOG.com. Now, GOG is a digital distribution platform like Steam with one major difference, and that's the lack of a DRM. Now, like Steam, it does have a client allowing you to add friends, cross-play with Steam users, multiplayer and achievements. The difference is that GOG games are DRM free, meaning that you get more freedom and it doesn't infringe on your rights or because the publishers try to prevent piracy. On the other hand, HumbleBundle.com gives a portion of their earnings, typically 9.5%, to charity and you still end up getting a great deal. They offer several services, one being Humble Bundle and the other one being Humble Monthly. There's a couple more with comics and all the rest, but these are the main ones. Now, the Humble Bundle gives you tiers of different games and these generally start at $1 for multiple games, going up to quite a bit more. And they're often excellent, trust me. The Humble Monthly is where for $12 you can get games with over a total of $100. They tell you one game you're guaranteed to get and the others are unknown. I participate in last month's Humble Bundle and for $12 I got XCOM 2, Rise Son of Rome and 7 other games. That's pretty fucking good if you ask me. From all these sites you generally get keys for Steam or less commonly Origin or Uplay. Now to redeem them it's really simple. Get into the Steam client and down at the bottom left click on add game and then click on activate a product on Steam. Click next, I agree and then enter in your product key that you got when you paid for it on that website. After that it should automatically add it to your library and it's now tied to you. After that, if you'd like to play the game, click on install and select the drive that you want it to install on. Generally, the default location that it's got on there is fine. Wait for it to download and just click play. Now, if you can't be bothered to always open Steam, click on the game and then click play, you can also create desktop shortcuts. Now, desktop shortcuts are little icons on your desktop that once you double click on them, automatically open Steam and start running the game. Now you can enable this during the install page, like the one you saw a second ago, or by right click on the game that's already installed and go to desktop shortcut. If you'd like to uninstall a game to make room on your hard drive or SSD, then right click on the installed game on the side panel and then click on uninstall. That's it. Quick note for noobs, even if you've uninstalled a game, it will still stay in your account or library and you can always re-download it whenever you want if you decide you want to play it another time. Now if you go to the store tab, you can browse through a bunch of games using tags. Ones that are on sale will show up as well, as well as specific genres that can be filtered. If you'd like to know more about a game on Steam before you buy it, you can obviously watch reviews and all that stuff, but click on the game and it'll give you a run of pretty much everything you need to know. From different bundles that you've got available in DLC, to features and support on the side, to supported languages, descriptions, system requirements, and even a substantial amount of reviews. It's stupidly helpful. Now the next tip is probably irrelevant for those who don't have multiple drives. Now if you'd like to change where your games are installed, such as a secondary hard drive, then head over to settings, go to downloads, and under Steam library folders you can add and remove, as well as make some folders default for games. This is useful if you've got say an SSD and a hard drive, but don't want the games to quickly reduce your available disk space on that SSD. I do this myself since I have a dedicated drive just for games and after that just click on close and ok. Lastly this step is if you still want a console like experience for the PC. Now Steam does have a big picture mode which is extremely friendly with controllers and for a simple experience with MKB. 
Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I can see how it does appeal to some. Within well, the big picture mode, you can go to chat or go to the online community tab, access your library, as you can see on screen now, and you get pretty much endless options as you would get within the regular desktop client. If you go to store, it is just like the regular client, and you can also access the web, which is really easy. It's very simple and great for a media PC or a living room setup. Now these steps I've just done in terms of adding games to other drives and so on can easily be mimicked and replicated on DRMs like Origin and so on. It's really not complicated at all, you just have to use some common sense. Anyway, thanks for watching. Quick note, there won't be an upload next week due to me having uni interviews at the moment. Afterwards, I will post an upload schedule video for those who actually care about that. And the reason is that I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube for several months until my A-levels are over. I'm not quitting YouTube, just temporarily taking a break from it. I will go over this soon though. If you've enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If it didn't help, then give me an idea of how I can improve my content. Speaking of which, if you've got any knowledge that you would have liked to see in this video, be sure to share it down in the comments below. I'd really love to see it. Hopefully by the time I get back on the board and finish posting these getting into PC gaming videos, Valve will have finally learned to counter three. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Proto. Adios! Whereas digital distribution, I can't fucking say that word, one can easily be mimicked, mimicked, great stuff.